people. I'm Kat Melheim with Coffee People Zine, and I am here today with Sarah Ball. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, so today we are going to just like talk and hang out uh, online because that's, you know, how we live these days. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Sarah, how about uh, you tell me, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Um, I mean, first of all, you've got art in the most recent issue of Coffee People Zine. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Love it. <laughs> I draw uh, myself a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so tell, tell us a little bit about you. Like, where do you live? Um, and what do you do in coffee? And what do you do in art? Yeah, so I live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Uh, and I, in coffee, I was most recently the head of training and quality control for where I worked, but I also roasted and fixed espresso machines. And I've done like years of being a barista, all sorts of touched a lot of areas. Of everything there. <laughs> Never been the green buyer, but have that, that's there's still time. Wants, maybe it doesn't get, <laughs> uh, in art, I went to animation school. I've worked as an animator, illustrator, generally do a lot of freelance stuff around like comics, uh, random illustrations, small like animated videos for people. Yeah. Cool. Did you start in art first or start in coffee first? Definitely coffee first. While I went to school for linguistics and German language was my first degree. And I, while I went to school there was when I started working in coffee. Um, and then yeah, I worked as a barista throughout that and throughout animation school. Eventually was like, I'll never have to be a barista again and went off to do animation. And then uh, didn't really, I, I loved it, but I also like, I think I wanted to work on my own projects. So I, I got uh, into the more the roasting side of coffee stuff. You did get very into coffee because you recently like won the Canadian cup tasters uh, competition and went to the worlds yeah 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 which was super strange fun because i was always i was never the type of like i'm not very competitive so it was just really strange to do the thing because i'm like cool either i i'm i might do well or i might do horrible <laughs> <laughs> what's uh, just, what made you like what made you initially like sign up like if you're not not competitive you're just like eh, i guess i'll try to taste the coffees yeah, so I was living and working in London, and I knew that my visa exp was expiring in three months, and that I had to go back to Canada. And I was like, well, uh, like, I don't know anybody in coffee in Canada anymore, really. Like, I probably knew one person, and uh, like, they didn't really have a job for me necessarily. They weren't sure. So I was like, I'll like, maybe I'll compete in that one of those things. And then like, I'll at least like meet people. It'll be like a good, good way. To um, like, as a coffee tech do you feel like a little bit more like settled with some job security or are you like also terrified yeah I think I like because I have I have like a like a bunch of different skills in coffee I'm 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 mostly scared because I know the way that my workplace uh shut themselves down like I don't really want to talk too much about it because it wasn't it wasn't a very nice way but and I don't want to like shame anyone on the internet but uh yeah. Uh, I know that like if my if my old work isn't hiring me back and people call me to fix machines like I can I can just do that which is cool uh, yeah. yeah and you've got the Ill illustration pick any work through that right now like do you have freelance uh, comics or design things that you're working on yeah so right now I have a project with my friend uh, I'm just finishing up for him he shot a documentary about Syrian refugees coming through the private sponsorship program in Canada. So I have a small, uh, like a project to finish with that. So that gives me like a little bit of like time before I have to start hustling for other stuff. Um, I started a Patreon to like just draw stuff while this is all happening and just kind of like feel out what happens. Like I'm not really expecting anybody to patronize me that's, that's <laughs> because it's like it's a weird
your time to ask people for money, but it's also like, like I was like, totally. I will put up uplifting things. And if your job's not affected by it and you have, and you like it, then like, by all means support it. But I'm not like, come on guys, like you have to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. I feel that I've, I haven't started a Patreon, but like, <laughs> I t <laughs> it's kind of funny. I, well, I guess not funny, funny, but, um, I like, I was, I gave myself April 1st as like the date to start a Patreon, like back in February. Yes. Uh, and now like, I haven't, I haven't put that up and I don't know that I necessarily, like I pretty much everything is up in the air. I'm like halfway. I'm like, yeah, I want to do it just so that like the people who can support me have that option. Cause I've had a number of people reach out to me and just ask like, do you have a Patreon? Can we give you mm -hmm. money? And I'm like, um, yeah, I should probably figure out a way to <laughs> let the people who want to give me money, give me money. But yeah, I feel you. It's a strange time to, to do that. Cause you like, you need that money to do this time, but also everyone's in the same boat. So you don't want to like put people off and yeah. money. Maybe like, it's just a strange strange time but that's um if when this goes on youtube um we'll put a link in the description down there to your patreon so you can uh, can check that out i think i i don't know yeah we decided to draw our our uh coffee celebrity favorite coffee celebrity um the good sir james hoffman <laughs> Yeah, I think he's a like a really good choice for a uh, caricature, which mm -hmm. sounds like an insult, but it's like you want somebody with like a really, really distinct features is always going to be super fun to draw. And I think James mm -hmm. Hoffman has that going on. Absolutely. And I, th I don't think that he would, uh, I don't think that James would be offended um, <laughs> to say that he would be good at a good, a good caricature to do. If and when um, he sees this, hopefully I don't say. Oh, we'll make too bad. We'll make it. sure he sees it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so how about so what are you using to to draw right now? Yeah. So what I like to do is watch a video while I'm drawing um, because mm -hmm. I find like you can. I'll put up when we make the final video of this. I'll put up a little picture in the corner of the screen or something so that like there's something there if people don't have a uh, way to watch something while drawing, but it, mm -hmm. it can be pretty easy to do. Um, yeah, the, usually I like to draw from videos because you kind of get a better sense. If, I, if it's not an in-person thing where the person's in front of me, I yeah. have to get a better sense of like how the volumes of their actual head work. Mm. If, you, if you just draw from a picture, like pictures always tend to flatten stuff out and totally. just change the shapes of somebody's face. And I think it's a yeah. lot easier to get like, interesting shapes from watching somebody uh and luckily james hoffman has so many videos <laughs> one or two one or two yeah. at least <laughs> cool so you're what what uh, what video are you going to be watching yeah i think i'm going to pick uh i've been watching a lot a lot of james's videos lately because i've been um like i've been w wanting to start a youtube channel for a really long time but just haven't gotten around to it because this, that, and the other thing. Um, but I've been watching a lot of his videos lately because I'm like finally getting on my, getting on my stuff and, and going to do it. So figured he's a, he's a good one to watch because uh, he, he makes such beautiful videos. Yeah, like they're very like simple, but very like engaging and nice. I really like them. For sure. I mean, well, I'm going like, to get it. Crazy, like... I find his like his opinions are never like the strongest point in his video. Like he he leaves it pretty open to like thinking however you want to think about coffee. Um, and so you are using you are using Photoshop to draw this. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you want to use um, traditional materials, pretty much like caricature, it like can be whatever you want it to be. So mm -hmm. uh, with with traditional media, I'm usually using like ballpoint pens a lot like felt tip pens pencil mm -hmm. crayons if I'm doing color and stuff like literally like sketchbooks from like Muji or something like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm nothing really fancy um yeah then it's just I, I find it a lot easier to share the screen of this than have to like 
top down view of me drawing or something and get my hands in the way. I thought this would be an easy way to <laughs> let everyone see how I'm drawing. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, for caricature, I generally start out just trying to get a sense of the shapes that James is made out of, uh, trying to figure out mm -hmm. what, what shapes like his hair in relation to his head. Like he's got a pretty mm -hmm. like big head, I think which makes it excellent mm -hmm. for caricature. He's got like those big, mm -hmm. like iconic glasses. His hair is pretty iconic. Um, mm -hmm. I think it'll, it'll be pretty easy to get something that looks like him once we decide. But you also want to kind of push stuff. So you don't want to just leave it like, okay, like his head, his head might be like a kind of like gentle triangle. But if you push it a little bit more, it might be a little bit, uh, funnier cooler yeah <laughs> yeah and do you usually like do you usually err on the side of drawing people funnier or like more like likenesses or do you have like a specific style that you like to kind of go with yeah like i like to i i try to draw when i'm drawing people i really like what what like really gets it for me is if it if it looks like them if you can show it to somebody and they're like oh my god that's that person but it also, like, I really enjoy it being funny. Like, I really, yeah. there's something that, like, I could draw, like, a really nice, accurate picture of someone. And, but it's, it just doesn't, like, feel the same amount of joy for me if I'm not, like, yeah. ah, this, this also looks hilarious. Totally. So I think I'm using a lot of, like, I'm pushing shapes a lot. Uh, like, pushing like kind of breaking the rules of perspective and stuff to make something humorous, but also trying to leave enough realism that it still looks like a, like a human. It's still like cartoony, but not. Did you, um, in, in animation school, did you also have to like, did you have to focus on drawing like real realism things as well or did you mostly focus on cartoony sort of things yeah to a main component of getting into animation school is submitting life drawings that are realistic yep. and like true to like weight and balance and like showing like being able to show like physical weight and different um like different textures in like simple line drawings so being able to tell that like a human being isn't just floating there in the middle of nothing that they actually like their body parts have weight when they touch things. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then throughout school, they kind of teach you how to do it better and then teach you how to do it in a more cartoony way. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a strong believer in like to be able to draw stupid, silly kind of cartoony drawings. If you can draw accurately, realistically first, then it makes, yeah. it makes all of your cartoons so much like better because it just makes it totally everything kind of feel right if you know the yeah. rules then you can break them better for sure i'm per personally i'm using just like a drawing pad that i got when i was in mexico city because i thought i was going to maybe get stuck there so i went to the art store and bought myself a, <laughs> a bunch of paper um and then using these pens markers I love these markers. Yeah. So when you're drawing, you're doing like a number of different like uh, examples or like a, you're like trying a number of different shapes all at once? Yeah, like I'm trying out a couple different ones and I'll try and like I'll throw some features on, like I'll draw some like basic shapes, kind of like a neck shape with a head shape maybe one's like a little bit more boxy like this one one's a little bit more of this like kind of shield shape um yeah i think i might try something a little bit more angular um mm -hmm. but trying to see what like like trying to like get that moment like throwing on features until i get to that moment where i'm like mm, this really won't ever look like him or getting to the <laughs> moment where you're like oh yeah that's that's his face right that's there it. yeah for sure yeah, he's got a very like distinct, he's got a lot of very distinct shapes, like his <laughs> hairline and like the swoop of his hair. Yeah, yeah, that like little, yeah, like almost, almost Jimmy Neutron hair, but it's like, it doesn't quite <laughs> get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
That's so good. Um, are there like, so when you're starting a drawing in general, are there different parts of the person that you look at first? Do you first look at their eye shape first? I mean, first look at their head shape. It looked like you were trying a, diff a couple different heads first. Yeah, like I definitely, I think I start by just trying to get like a fun shape for their head. Because yeah. then you can really, you can draw somebody's face onto anything. Like I could take an orange and I could, I could really like draw on top of an orange with a pen and make it into somebody. And sure. it like, you, it would look like them, even if that's not really their head shape. Um, yeah. But I think getting that like a, a head shape that works and it, it just like makes everything so much funnier, so much better once like if you find something that also fits with what their head is. Um, yeah. And then throwing those features on top, I like look for like anything distinguishing about the person. If there's something like, oh, they have a really big nose, uh, like James Hoffman's lips are definitely going to be the one that I like spend the most time trying to get something that like accurately looks like it, but still yeah. is it in a way that like makes it funnier. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, like definitely his glasses. And then I think for everybody, the likeness really like it, like no matter who you're drawing, there's something about like eyebrows and eyes that I really pay attention to to try and get that likeness about them. I think maybe because that's the part of people's faces that you stare at the most when you're like talking to them or watching them. So if you get that something accurate but pushed is still is gonna. Yeah. What got you interested in animation in the first place? Um, as a kid, like, I think I, like, I always loved animated movies, and I really, like, as a child wanted to do it, but then mm -hmm. at some point, like, some adult in my life told me, like, oh, like, people don't make those anymore, like, computers make those, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll do something else with life, and then I always drew, and I, like, I did art all the way through high school, but I never, I just always knew that I was probably going to do something more academic, and chose linguistics mm -hmm. and German language eventually. I also thought maybe the scientists, but uh, when I finished with linguistics, I was kind of just looking for like, oh, like, what do I actually do now that I realize this isn't what I want to do? And a friend of mine had told me that there was a, like, a school that did a program that was just animation. I was like, you can go to school for that? Oh, <laughs> sweet. And then... The adults have lied to me? Yeah. <laughs> Like, I think I just pushed it out of my mind up until that point when I was like, oh, God, what do I actually do? Sure. What, uh, how did you decide you didn't want, you didn't care about linguistics? Uh, I didn't think, or not I think, that you didn't care about it, but you just didn't want to do it. Yeah, like, I found it interesting, but it was always a struggle for me to, like, actually pay attention, to go to class. Like, it was interesting, and I liked reading my textbooks, but I was just like, you know, like, I don't love this like I'm really having a hard time wanting to love it and what you have to do with linguistics is you're either going to become a professor or a writer like you're not really gonna like there isn't that many practical jobs for the kind of linguistics I was studying uh, mm -hmm. so I was like okay if I really don't if I really don't enjoy going to school for this now I don't think mm -hmm. uh, like <laughs> I'm gonna want to be what am I gonna do like force myself to become a professor and hate that or like sure what were you doing like in the meantime then, like when you were deciding? I went and worked on a maple syrup farm in between um, for like a couple months, most Canadian thing in the world, I know. <laughs> what, what is what, the work of a Canadian syrup farmer? <laughs> like, what do you do? Yeah, I was there. It was like a really small family farm. Um, I was just like, it's like, do you know woofing? It was like yeah, yeah, for work sure. away, which is kind of yeah. like, I think more people know woofing, but uh, so it was like a work away where I was exchanging labor for room and board. And yeah. so I went and you like all, since it's such a small one, they still just tap trees and hang buckets and then have a sugar shack that they put it in. I was there during summer, so that's not maple season. Um, but yeah, so they like, I'd gone back and visited in a winter time later afterwards, like I stayed friends with them. Um, but yeah, so I chopped a lot of wood. <laughs> so was, sapping season is winter time. 
Yeah, it'll be like the end of winter, uh, beginning of spring where it's cold at night and it like, you need, you need it to get cold, like freezing at night and warm during the day so that it makes the sap flow through the trees. Huh. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And so you were there in the summer, so you just chopped wood and did chopped wood like, and like prepped and... stuff for when they'd need it. Next, uh, they had like a little bit, they have chickens and stuff. So I like fed the chickens, watched an egg come out of a chicken. That was great. Whoa. <laughs> That's awesome. How did you, how did you find that uh, gig? You just like, do you just sign up on the work away, whatever thing you were, like you were saying? Yeah, I had a friend that had done it in Europe somewhere doing something else. I'm not, I can't remember what she did, but um, yeah, like she had done like a woofing thing. So I was like, okay, like I'll look for like something like that. Maybe I'll go to a different country, but I ended up just staying in Canada because I found the maple farm and I was like, this is cool. Yes. That's super cool. Huh. The things, the things we do, right? <laughs> Get bored. Go Just, live on a yeah. farm. Cool though. What um, ha have you have you gotten bored uh, lately? And uh, what was the like the most recent board switch up job thing that you've done? Uh, hmm. I mean, I think like generally, like coming back to Canada was enough excitement to keep me like still in coffee. I think. Um, which I really like. Um, going to Costa Rica was probably the like uh, most recent. Like, uh, like I'm bored. I need something to do. So that wasn't through. When was that? It wasn't through my workplace, but it was one of the people. Selva is the coffee. They're a green. Uh, what what do you call it? In between, it's like they're like they're exporters. I guess they. So they work with the farmers there, and they sell the coffee to people here. Um, but yeah, so I was working with them in their cupping lab at Origin, and I'd met them through my workplace, but had just like, they needed help volunteers in their cupping lab. So I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. I could do that. I don't speak Spanish That's though, <laughs> which wasn't as big of a problem, but I was like, I should learn some words. Neat. When, when was that? So that was right as COVID-19 was starting. Uh, that was, uh... I left at the end of February, came back at the beginning of March. Nice. Yeah, so you just got to, because Co Costa Rica was one of the first ones to close their borders, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I was still there. They, like, no, nobody had gotten sick there yet. And it was, yep. like, on the 5th, like, as I was leaving, somebody else I know was supposed to go, and yeah. they'd be the next person there doing what I was doing. Um, yeah. But they, uh person that I know canceled because he was like oh I'm really worried about it um, yeah which like now I think at the time I was like what it's fine and now it's like oh shit you, yeah. you were definitely right um <laughs> right for sure well yeah it's, it's it was hard to I feel like it's hard to know like no, nobody really knew how serious it was gonna get yeah yeah and now it's like okay yeah now we're all fucked JK, JK. Well, that's cool that you were able to do it and like get that experience right before, like right before all travel is off. Yeah, it felt like it was a nice last thing to have done uh, yeah. before everything's like shut down. I was like, at least I like left the country and felt totally like I did a thing. Have you um, have you been to like Coffee Origins before? No, it was my first time ever going uh, anywhere that farms coffee, which was super cool because I was staying on the farm. Is it, uh, what part of like the coffee season is it right now in Costa Rica? Are they doing like, are they doing any harvesting right now? Or were they yeah, when you were they there? Had, they were just coming up to the end of their season, but they had like a very strange season where some stuff they think they might have to uh to harvest this year which is insane and like is putting a lot of stress because they won't have the oh. migrant workers that they normally get um, right everyone will have gone back to nicaragua and panama and right. they're kind of worried because it, it might screw up the next year's season 
but that like stuff sure. was starting to flower again, but also oh, like yeah. all the cherries were being picked. Huh. So right at the beginning of March was around the end of their season. And it's like starting, it's like that perfect time for like everybody is like finishing up their, I guess like right now they're probably starting, everybody's doing their dry milling and stuff and like thinking mm -hmm. about like trying to get their coffee bought by everyone. Yeah. And just kind of like unfortunate in this, like where like coffee roasters maybe aren't necessarily thinking about that right now. Right. Or yeah. About right. Up. Yeah. Which sucks because I mean, that's kind of how stuff happens. Like if, if everyone here is affected by something, then even if, even if it isn't a huge health crisis yet in those countries, it's still like affecting their jobs and their like farming. Do you uh, want to get back to Costa Rica or other coffee producing countries at some point? Yeah, I think definitely like yeah, I want to go see, cause it like every country is so different. And then I think it's like hard to, to really under, like I've had the difference explained to me how stuff works in Brazil, how stuff works in Africa. Uh, but like, I think I learned so much about like, it, like just being in Costa Rica, actually seeing how stuff works there. It's like conceptually you can understand it, but then to actually go see it, it's a lot different. Yeah, for sure. How's your drawing? Oh, that's so cool. Oh, you're doing <laughs> such a good job. So you had done like, a couple different base shapes and then you kind of just pick which one you are most excited about yeah like the one that i feel like yeah this has this looks like him and now i'm just kind of because it's on the computer and i can easily do it i'm like just drawing over top and then changing it when i don't like how bits are working together and kind of trying to get those features to really really look like him mm -hmm. um I'm very grateful for the YouTube's like continuous play thing right now. <laughs> so I don't have to select a new video. It just keeps nice. going. Yeah. My, mine has been kind of cycling through. So now I'm watching his uh, best reusable coffee cups. I've got why modern espresso is so ugly. <laughs> I, st I haven't watched that one yet. I definitely watched it at some point and now I can't remember what he says about it. I'll have to watch it with sound again later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I did yellow and now I'm going to move to a, like a bit of a darker color. What I like to do when I'm drawing usually is like start with like a yellow or a very faint color to kind of like kind of like what you're doing on the computer, like get general like shapes and like iron some stuff out and then I like to go over with like a little bit darker color and do like get more of it like a distinct outline um so I'm moving on to my next color which is just kind of like an orangey color this is how this is how I what I've got so far yeah sweet yeah awesome does it usually take you to get like a a caricature drawing yeah if it's, if it's somebody I've never because it's so funny with like either people you know or celebrities that you've seen their face a lot uh because I think you're it's a lot harder for you to like let go of whatever whatever you thought of that person like for me it's so easy to get like funny little drawings on the train of people that I'm like that definitely looks like you but I don't I haven't seen their face so many times so it's either that I just then forget completely what that person looked like, or it's like, it's just a lot easier to do. Um, with these, yeah. Like, I think, yeah, like it takes me maybe an hour to kind of like really get that like good, good likeness of somebody. And usually like, it'll take me a couple of drawings, like I'll do a caricature of somebody once and then I'll always want to do it again because I'm like, ah, oh, like mm. I didn't nail it yet. 
Mm. Do, do you ever get to a point where you're like, yeah, this is done, this is perfect? Or are there always things that you, that you still wanna like tease apart or fix? Yeah, like there's definitely, like there's some people, like my best friend does, uh, like, like I've drawn him so many fucking times that I like, at this point, I'm like, yes, like I have the perfect like caricature of you and like can draw yeah. it in like two seconds. Um, yeah. But like, and like myself, like I will change the one that I do of myself to be different things, but I definitely have like a little tiny version of me that's like in the smallest amount of lines possible, but still looks like me. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, uh -huh. glasses, freckles, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, but then with like, yeah, like with, with other people that I'm not drawing so often, like it's, there's always gonna be something that I'm like, ah, like it just, it's not quite perfect yet. Sure. Or maybe it doesn't like, or I get something that looks like them, but it doesn't feel as like funny as it could be. So you you like to you like to draw for the com comedic effect. Definitely, yeah. This is so much fun. I'm having a great time. Yeah. Such a funny name to draw. <laughs> I think so that's true. a prime choice. Very like I fun for coffee and then also a fun person. He's got this like confusing little like uh like almost double mustache that's like barely mm. like barely there, but it still exists that I think is going to be key in like actually making this James Hoffman, but it's like, I keep getting uh, like John Waters vibes instead. And I'm like, uh, that's not the right. <laughs> <laughs> I totally hadn't realized that until you, now you just said it and now I'm looking at his video and it's 100% there. Yeah. It's like an almost like half little, just like memories of a mustache. Yeah. Do you feel like you have a, like you see, do you, do you see people in caricature when you just kind of go about your everyday life now? There's definitely like some people that I'll see on like the subway or something that I'm like, you're, you're like, you are a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> or like friends that I make that I'm like, you don't know it yet, but there's an entire show in my brain dedicated to you. <laughs> <laughs> One day I'll make it. <laughs> are people ever like offended by that yeah like I definitely have a friend that I while I was still in college for uh animation school um she was a barista that I worked with at a coffee shop in town and I would like I'd draw all of them and she'd be like you're not allowed to draw me you draw me so gross I was like ah <laughs> Because you said that, I now have to make a pitch package entirely about you. And like, did it for like a school project. And then, yeah. But then she really liked it afterwards. Like, yeah, my show. <laughs> One day, like, I, ha I think I feel like I have to finish it, make it better, and pitch it to a network. But yeah, I feel like that should be flattering. Like, you are, you are so unique and interesting that, that there's, there could be a whole thing about you. I think one of my favorite things about drawing into a computer is that I can just like select bits of his face and change it. Ooh. Fancy Photoshop. And just like move them around without actually having to redraw it, which is uh -huh. fun. Also feels a little bit like cheating. But... <laughs> hey, it works. I just had to like move his neck and so now I have, now he has like two necks on my drawing, so. <laughs>
uh, my favorite things to draw are cups. So this is this yeah. is far and away outside of my normal uh, repertoire. But I'm having a very nice time. Excellent. Yeah, it's so funny, like, I think everything, drawing everything is the same, but also different. Like there's definitely, yeah. at one point I had a teacher that was like, if you don't want to draw a certain thing, never draw it, don't put it in your portfolio for like art jobs. Because if you, if, you, if somebody really likes it and they hire you to draw that thing, you're going to be, told, <laughs> if you hate drawing robots, don't put a portfolio full of robots even if you think that's what somebody's gonna like because then you're gonna get a job drawing robots and then you're gonna be stuck at drawing robots forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think Are that's like, people your favorite? Yeah definitely like I think like cartoon like like either inventing characters or drawing people in character is my favorite little area of drawing but i draw a lot of like cats <laughs> do you have a cat yeah we have a my roommate came with a cat and uh that is the only reason why i chose her no um <laughs> i used to have a cat before i left canada and this cat's so similar to him like it's this big yeah cat, black cat nice what do you like about drawing people's so much or cats um i think it's that like satisfaction of getting it to like have like something that has a personality and i think you can draw like anything with a personality like you can draw a jar of beans that has like a cute like personality to it but i think people people get it a lot more when you're drawing people um like i can do like cartoony versions of like bottles and jars that i think have like their own distinct little personalities but I like your bananas. Yeah, and then I'll draw like even when I draw objects, I'm like, put some eyes on it. A little more interest. Yeah, I think it just it makes me laugh when they have stupid little personalities. Mm -hmm. so like either inventing personalities for the people I see on the train, or like drawing <laughs> characters out of my head, usually based off of stuff like. I'm sure at some point all those characters that I'll create have come from something like that. Like I've I've seen something mm -hmm. in real life that makes me think like think of that character. Mm -hmm. How do you know when you're done? You just feel it? Yeah, like if I if I like look at the person and look back and I feel like it feels like them I think that's like it's a hard feeling to describe like it's just like you have that moment of like yeah that's it yeah like I think it's not although I think I'd have to do like a whole bunch of drawings of him to really like capture it because I've never oddly I've never tried to draw James Hoffman before even though this is like definitely like so good like such a such a prime person to draw uh, totally well, you, now you'll you'll have to just do it uh, from now on. Like, <laughs> he can be your muse now. Start emailing him increasingly uh, worrying emails of like, <laughs> Turn your do you want to <laughs> <laughs> end up with a restraining order? <laughs> it's like, oh, damn it. <laughs> Didn't like any of us. <laughs> like, I swear, I just want to draw you. You're so intriguing. Your face is just me. <laughs> Do you um, ever like start stuff on pen and paper, like on the trainer and like that, and then transfer it to computer? Yeah, like I've def I definitely will take stuff that I've like drawn in the real world and either just like put it out and like sit it on my desk while I'm drawing into the computer and like kind of just redraw it. I've scanned stuff, stuff occasionally, but I think I've gotten less into doing that. I think I did that a lot more in college when I was less confident about 
my style or like how I draw, how I draw things. Cause I'd, I'd mm -hmm. get one and I'd be like, okay, but I can't do this again. So I have to scan it and then put it, put it in. Otherwise I, like, I'll never get it again. But I think, yeah. Um, slowly I've gained the confidence of being able to like, I could redraw something again. And I think that's when I felt like yeah. I, I had achieved a, like a, like a good level. Um, <laughs> The next level in the video game was yeah <laughs> level up like it wasn't just a mistake like i can do this it's <laughs> a good good little confidence boost uh, how do you how do you scan stuff do you have like a, a scanner yeah, so back when I used to do it a lot, I had like a really nice scanner that I could scan stuff yeah. in. Now I just take, I'll usually just take a picture with my iPhone. Yeah. It's good enough. Like phone cameras are good enough now. Yeah, that's kind of, that's what I do if I ever like, if I ever try and scan something, it's just like, or like try and draw, if I want to draw it on my computer or my iPad or whatever, I just, take a picture and then like try and up the contrast or whatever so that it it's more like bold or whatever yeah nice so now you're going uh, over on top of all of the like uh sketch sort of thing and doing like just straight up line work yeah so if i if i was doing it in my sketchbook uh, I would be doing something similar to you, uh, or just like redrawing it so many times that I then can get like just a clean drawing with a pencil. But mm -hmm. since it's in the computer, I can just throw another like Photoshop layer over top, which I've, mm -hmm. I've been doing, like I think I'm on my sixth layer now. Um, so I've just been throwing them on top, turning down the, like the opacity of the layer before, and then putting the next mm -hmm. one on top and drawing like with that one as my main layer and then now at this point this will probably be the last layer and yeah I'm just like trying to get the lines to look interesting next to each other using them to like give weight and depth to stuff even though it's like a pretty like cartoony flat style um, mm -hmm. using like line weight to kind of bring stuff to life or make it look interesting mm -hmm. and like if I'm not if I'm not going to throw any color on top then I'll usually use like my line weight to try and like differentiate like when I get to like his eyes and stuff since they're lighter like I might use some lines to make it feel like it's a different color than the white of his eyeball but it's also not uh not definitely just black mm -hmm. which gets was probably the hardest part <laughs> yeah I think this is the point when I usually try and figure out how exactly how like fun and wonky I can make it without losing like without it just looking wrong you know like I can like change the way that eyes are supposed to sit on the face but then at some yeah. point, like you have to still make the choice to like make it real enough that people will believe that it's like they, they like suspend their disbelief of how like like how faces work so it like all works in the style together but doesn't look broken when you are existing in that world that you've drawn mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i love the lips that you gave him that's so good yeah this is he also has like very specific teeth like yeah it's like so hard to get this like balance between like it doesn't look like like something like super messed up because he doesn't have like crazy like messed up teeth or something and like it's like when you're like trying to push that a little bit it mm -hmm. make it like a bit cartoony but still look like him I think it's like I had moments of being like oh this just is like backwards <laughs> hillbilly this is not James <laughs> Bond. I usually don't like actually do like color color I usually just keep it you know do keep it as like three different colors I like my base sketch color and then like a 
an outline color and then I like to either do like highlights or like low lights mm -hmm. but um right now I'm putting in I'm doing his glasses in red and his eyes in blue just for fun yeah Yeah, I'm thinking about color for this, and I don't know if I'll do it. I might do it just the lines, but I'm also thinking like how to make his glasses look, especially his glasses in color is definitely like 100% a good way to be like that. Yeah, like. Well, yeah, his 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 glasses are definitely red, and definitely that's definitely like that's a an emblematic or a, a very James Hoffman thing. The red sort of turtle tortoise shell, isn't that, is that what it's called? Yeah. A, um, do you have a typical like ear shape that you usually do? Like, is that, is that usually how you do ears with that like line and like a kind of look like an H? On the inside? Yeah, I think I use like like maybe like this little thing a lot where it's like almost coming mm -hmm. out of the side of somebody's head, like a weird little yeah thing. Or yeah, like that kind of like super cartoony ear. Yeah. <laughs> Is that like that's like a cartoony standard sort of deal? Yeah, like I wonder like a lot of the time, like my friends are way better at telling me where, like where I get things from, like yeah. with like the little bits of where my style come from, comes from definitely like everybody. It just slowly as you're watching different cartoons or drawing with different people, uh, right. like you kind of take on bits of their style or the style of the things that you watch. And so mm -hmm. I think it all, it all stems back from some sort of cartoon I've watched at some point, but I think for sure. over time it's harder for me to like remember where exactly I got that kind of stuff from. Yeah, for sure. What uh, what are your favorite cartoons to watch? Um, I haven't been watching a lot of stuff recently. Rick and Morty has been like, uh, I love Dan Harmon. Um, uh -huh. So then Dan Harmon plus a cartoon was thought, like super awesome. Um, mm -hmm. I watch a lot of like little independent short film stuff that's like neat. Um, how about like growing up like uh were there were there things that you remember watching and those being the the things that inspired you to want to do animation i was obsessed with the brave little toaster and i could not understand why i couldn't have it like back in the 90s when you can just like like have it on demand like i was like I want to watch The Brave Little Toaster now because it was on TV. I love day. The Brave Little Toaster. And, like my like my mom tried to explain to me that it's like, well, it's like you can't just have it. And I was like, no, like turn it back to the channel that The Brave Little <laughs> Toaster is on. Yeah, Brave Little Toaster just uh, streaming all the time. Yeah, Brave like little in my head toaster. there was a channel that just was Brave Little oh. Toaster. <laughs> I'm gonna have to find that. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to watch that again. Yeah. I haven't watched that probably since I was eight. Yeah, I love The Little Mermaid. Um, but my older sister loved The Little Mermaid more. So yeah. at one point, my cousin wanted to make because I have long red hair. Was like, oh, we're gonna have, we're gonna make a like an aerial birthday party for you. Oh, so, like like was super excited to like bake the cake and do this stuff because she'd do like our birthday party stuff. Um, uh -huh. But my older sister got too upset about it and I wasn't allowed to be Ariel because she was Ariel. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Which is funny because it's like she's blonde and like definitely like it's just like nobody was gonna think of that as like a fun birthday party idea for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you have all you have so many other of the Disney princesses. <laughs> all the blonde ones. Give me this one. You have all of that. I get this one. <laughs> like letting these videos cycle through because now I've had so many like different options of uh outfits <laughs> where I'm like what is your standard 
I think that's uh-huh. another like like getting like a very like especially with celebrities like a very them sort of outfit mm-hmm. which one are you uh going with I think uh fisherman-esque sweater from uh when he is doing the rock espresso maker and grinder mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that might be the one it feels like a very like good gentle hoffman outfit choice like mm-hmm. nice fisherman's weather mm-hmm. <laughs> How many hours a day do you uh, usually spend drawing these? I guess I guess now is different than previous. Like, how about like when you're when you're working full time? How much time do you spend drawing? And when now that you're not working full time, how much time do you spend drawing? Yeah, if I'm not if I'm working full time, it depends. It'll usually depend on what like freelance stuff I have on the side. Uh, oh, sure. Sometimes I'm like. People were like, what do you like to do in your free time? And I was like, free, free time. <laughs> uh, what does that mean? What is that? I'd like some. Um, but now that I have it, I don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, probably like, it, it depends like maybe like an hour or two a day. If I'm not freelancing, I might not draw for a couple of days. Um, mm-hmm. And then on the weekend, draw for like a more substantial amount of hours. But if mm-hmm. I do have freelance gigs, then it's uh, probably going to be like four hours a day after work, which is like a good solid commitment to. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> like at some periods when it's getting to the end of a like a contract that I'm doing for somebody, I might be drawing like like maybe only sleeping six hours a night because I have to like you got to get it done. <laughs> that it's like okay after this I'll, it'll be okay again and I'll never do that again <laughs> and then another job comes along I'm like cool I'll do that now <laughs> I'll learn from my mistakes calling mine I'm done I said that a while ago and then I st- I didn't stop yeah Ooh, I like that I like the neck on that collar on that sweater that looks so cozy <laughs> nice fisherman sweater yeah what do you have sweet yes oh my god it's so James Hoffman <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm pretty happy with it actually More happy, more happy with it than I thought I would be. Mm-hmm. Fun. Yeah, I think I'm gonna fiddle around with where all the fine, like, this is pretty much what I have. All right, I'm calling mine. I'm done. I said that a while ago, and then I st- I didn't stop. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. I like the neck on, the collar on that sweater. That looks so cozy. <laughs> Nice fisherman's weather. Yeah, what do you have? Sweet, yes. Oh my God, it's so James Hoffman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty happy with it, actually.
more happy more happy with it than I thought I would be mm -hmm. fun yeah I think I'm gonna fiddle around with where all the fine like this is pretty much what I have and then all I'm gonna do before making the final thing is kind of fiddle around with like the thickness of all the lines and mm -hmm. uh, like how many little lines go in places where I want to make uh, it look a little bit more like a tonal difference. Uh, probably yeah. just his hair, I'm gonna like mess around with where everything's black and where it's white. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Love it. Cool. Well, heck, thanks. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to, you know, tell the people on YouTube or whatever? <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> anything well, we didn't cover about art or coffee or your life or anything? Well, there's so much, so, so many facets to me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think that's pretty good. Yeah. Great. Love it. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you for uh, this fun time. It's been cool getting to talk to you again. This yeah. time, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like, huh? Yeah, it's, uh, it's nice to actually, like, meet in virtual life, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and yeah, like, hopefully we'll get to meet in actual life sometime, uh, yeah. in the near future if I if I'm able to come to Toronto if the barista league is still doing their stuff yeah. up there in uh in I think August or whenever um yeah I've, I've I've been wanting to get to um Toronto anyway because there are a number of like coffee shops and things that I want to check out there Ooh, what are your favorite shops or what have been your favorite shops in in town yeah. Uh, a friend of mine has a, like, co it's called Lion Coffee, but um, she, it's coffee and then also with her business partner, Chocolat du Cat. So it's a girl named Cat also, uh, but she makes, like, gourmet chocolates and they're amazing. Mm. Uh, and then also really great coffee. Uh, definitely my favorite place. Uh, there's a, there's a place down the street from me that's called Voodoo Child that's, like, I really love it. Like, it's just like very small. And it's just like being a coffee shop before I was even like, before I was even into coffee, into coffee. Like, I just liked it. It like looks kind of cool. But yeah. Neat. Well, heck, I'll have to come and we'll have to go to those places and uh, hang out and draw caricatures on the bus or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once we're allowed on the bus again. Yeah, right. Cool. Well, have a great rest of your Saturday. Thanks so much for uh, hanging out. Yeah.